It's 6 p.m. on a cool winter's eve in Garden Road in Melbourne's southeast, but St. Stephen's Church is alive with the warmth and laughter of children's voices. They run and yell and play with a kind of energy few of their parents could muster on a Friday night. As the activities begin in earnest, they settle in. This is St. Stephen's newest ministry, a youth group called Kids and Teens, run in partnership with Trinity Uniting Church in Brighton. Kids and Teens is the brainchild of St. Stephen's vicar, the Reverend Paul Carr. While only recently joining the St. Stephen's family, Paul was keen to build upon the church's commitment to youth ministry while adapting to the age's changing circumstances. One of the historic elements of this church was that it always had a, um, a desire to build youth and teens ministry and it did indeed have a group a number of years ago. But that, given the change in demographics and children getting older, moving into Sunday sports, congregations going down in numbers, a familiar pattern across a lot of churches, meant that there was uh, not enough uh, youth activity and potential growth for the future. So we recognised that there was a real need to get youth and kids ministry going in this area. Uh, we're close by to schools. We have a lot of desire and interest from local families. Um, we're a traditional church and, and that's fantastic. What it also means is that it gives us the challenge of developing youth ministry in a far greater way than it's been done before. The Kids and Teens program is broken up into a three-week cycle each month. Week one looks at the wider world, focusing on mission and what that means locally and internationally. Week two is dedicated to music and cuisines from different cultures, and week three is a film night, held either at St. Stephen's or a local cinema, while the final week of each month is a night off. So traditionally, um, youth group and youth ministries uh, revolves around uh, lots of Bible teaching and activities, and we keep all of that. But the general theme is games and also um, getting to know one another and love thy neighbour. That's the key emphasis to all of this. For the past several weeks, the mission focus has been Cambodia. The group has been learning about how projects have been improving the lives in the impoverished nation. They've also been raising funds through dutifully filling lolly jars, which are then sold to businesses. The funds from that are then matched by Rotary Australia and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. By the time all matching is complete, each jar is worth around $3,500 to the project. But even to a bystander, it's clear that the kids here are gaining something much more than a sense of pride. And what stops us getting polio? Um, injections and flu vaccinations. The vaccinations. Yeah, vaccinations. Yeah, vaccinations. And does anyone um, remember how many countries still in the world have polio? Was it three? Correct. Yeah, yeah. Part of the success of the program is its ecumenical nature. Pairing up with the Uniting Church down the road has ensured that the churches better serve their communities. These days, including mine, my church, there aren't many uh, young people, or called next generation people, um, lacking in number in many ways. And um, it is so good to get together when uh, there's a good program and when we have, we can uh, cooperate, cooperative with other local churches beyond the denominational background is, is a win-win for both of us. And it's so great to have uh, our little ones uh, play together and eat together and have, have fun together. It's so wonderful. It starts just bringing the whole thing together and I think that's really where uh, we become stronger. We use one another as resources, we share the gospel in different ways and um, we just have a whole, load of, whole heap of fun. The results so far have been encouraging, with numbers swelling several times larger than the first night's participants. It's been hugely positive. Um, we've got uh, families that are connecting with the church and simply asking some of those big questions. Um, whereas they perhaps have never even been to a church before. It is a wonderful way of giving the gospel out to people without being too, too fierce with it and 
so they can start understanding and unpackaging some of the real principles of the Bible and asking big questions about life. Uh, it's, it's a great way of people just getting to know what it's like to be part of a bigger picture in God's kingdom. For their part, the kids love it too. You can make new friends and you can work on like how you're social. And for example, if you're very shy, you can be <laughs> friends with um, people you just met and then soon you might even know each other very well. I like about youth group is that you get to pray when you eat and that you get to play games and squish squishies and play ball games and have fun and I love praying here. I also like playing soccer because it's a friendly competition. And are you guys going to recommend this to your friends at school? Or? Yes, definitely. definitely. Yeah, it's so much definitely. fun. Definitely.